Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing Srilal Shukla's novel Rag Darbari. Srilal Shukla, the author of the novel Rag Darbari, was an officer of high standing who belonged to the IAS cadre. He was from a conservative Brahmin family. After graduating with a BA from Allahabad University in ancient Indian history, English literature and Sanskrit, he joined the government service where he worked mainly in and around Lucknow, including Raibareli district. Rag Darbari is an autobiographical work. It has won a Sahitya Academy Award as well. The novel has been translated by Gillian Wright. It portrays the ugly side of the nexus between politicians, businessmen, criminals and policemen. It depicts the corrupt world of these people who exploit society to satiate their material desires and needs. Another dimension of the novel is its portrayal of the power struggle in the rural landscape of post-independence India. In an ironic vein, this power struggle has been somewhat overlooked by the English-speaking literati at New Delhi. The novel brilliantly captures the life of a mundane North Indian village which emanates the aroma of the earth and is representative of other Indian villages. The story spans over a short period of six months in Shivpal Ganj village of Aud region in Uttar Pradesh. These six months revolve around a postgraduate who comes to stay with his maternal uncle Vaidhiji. He is on a sabbatical in the serene atmosphere of the sleepy village. Vaidhiji is a power broker who influences and manipulates the village's social and economic activities. The young man is introduced as Ranganath and he is the protagonist of the story. He comes to the village to enjoy its pristine surroundings. He is also an admirer of Western liberal education which has taught him some values and ideals. But to his surprise, he discovers that along with the other villagers, his uncle also misuses the power to get a hold on the villagers. He observes the social undercurrents in the day-to-day -day village life and the difference between myth and reality become obvious. The village has several characters. Most important of them is Vaidhiji, the big daddy of the village. He is assisted by his sons Badri Pehelwan and Rupan. A few more distinguished characters are the teachers at the village school and the principal who always bursts into Audhi, a dialect of Hindi in North India. The story does not have a defined plot and is merely a series of anecdotes. Vaidhiji's nephew named Ranganath visits his native village after completing his MA to improve his health as advised by his doctor. It is hilarious to know how Vaidhiji, which means healer, cures the young boy's mind in multiple ways. After his masters, Ranganath, who has a profound belief in high ideals and poetic justice, faces the hypocrisy and the meanness of the village people. The very first incident depicts his innocence and blind faith. In order to travel to his uncle's place, Ranganath boards a bus which is driven by a rash driver without regard for the pedestrians. After witnessing him nearly run over a few cows and sleeping shepherds, 
the young man is finally relieved when a few police officials stop the bus. Ranganath watches them question the driver from close quarters. The corrupt police officials try to make some money by troubling the driver for his unruly and dangerous driving. But Ranganath, who is still naive, reads it as punishing the driver for his misdeeds. Throughout the novel, the reader comes across many such incidents that destroy Ranganath's high ideals and faith in justice. He proves to be a fragile person who cannot stand up for himself or fight for others. He is reduced to a silent spectator. Despite the gaps and crisis in the story, the novel manages to sustain the reader's interest throughout. The satire and brilliant sense of humor instills life into the book. One can only marvel at the extent to which the author details his description and Ragdarbari never runs out of laughs. For example, the description of Mr. Khanna, who is a teacher at the school, suddenly sitting up with knees bent and chest thrust forward in a pose made famous by the late Marilyn Monroe. Vaidyaji, he is the mastermind behind all village politics. Very eloquent in framing his sentences and choosing his words, Vaidyaji is also authoritatively the manager of the local college. Ruppan Babu, the younger son of Vaidyaji and the leader of college students, Ruppan Babu could never clear his tenth from the college in which his father is manager. Ruppan Babu is aggressively involved in all village politics and is well appreciated in the village community due to his illustrious parentage. Towards the end of the novel, a gradual change can be observed in his behavior which can be attributed to the influence of Ranganath. Badri Pehelwan, he is the elder brother of Ruppan Babu who distances himself away from his father's involvements and keeps himself busy in his bodybuilding exercises and takes care of his palak balak, a term widely used for blind followers of a person, protege in polished English. Ranganath An MA in history, Ranganath is the nephew of Vaidyaji. He has come to Shivpal Ganj on a vacation to rejuvenate himself in the tranquil surroundings. The writer beautifully uses the character Ranganath to present a dismal condition in the villages through the eyes of an educated person. Chote Pehelwan He is one of the Palak Balaks of Badri Pehelwan. Chote is an active contributor in village politics and is a frequent participant in the meetings conducted by Vaidyaji. Principal Sahib He is the principal of the college. His associations with other members of the staff in college forms an important part of the plot. Sanichar His real name is Mangaldas but people call him Sanichar. He is a servant working at Vaidyaji's household. He was later made the puppet and is made a Pradhan of village with the use of political tactics by Vaidyaji. Langad He is the representative of the miserable common man who is compelled to bow before the corrupt system to get things done. Politics and government are the two main themes of the novel. Uttar Pradesh is renowned 
for its active participation in the politics of the country. The author paints the politics that trickles at the grassroots level and the different facets of politics like factionalism, nepotism and behind the scenes manipulation which are quite common and are known through national press. The author targets UP's highly developed bureaucracy as it is insensitive to the common man and its ugly connections with politicians. The title is self-explanatory and reveals the political emphasis of the plot. Rag Darbari is the name of one of the most complex ragas of Indian classical music. But Srilal Shukla has presented a literal meaning, the melody of the court. In the novel, it refers to the tune sung by the courtiers in the palace of Indian kings. But now it glorifies a village politician. The court of the Rag Darbar is presided over by Vedyaji, a Brahmin Ayurvedic doctor who is the political brain of his village, Shivpal Ganj. The story, set in the late 1950s, explains Vedyaji's intense desire and struggle for political control of Shivpal Ganj a fictional village typical of Raibareli district, southeast of Lucknow. Among the novel's other main characters are Vedhiji's elder son, the village strongman Badri Wrestler, his younger son, the student leader Ruppan Babu, and his nephew Ranganath, a postgraduate from the town. The timeline of the story shows that Vedhiji, who tries to reign supreme, and control the activities of the local cooperative union and college initiates a bid for power over the village council. He experiences the resistance to his authority in the college from a group of rebel teachers supported by his main political adversary in the village. In Rag Darbari, the main characters happen to be Brahmins because in much of UP, the dominant castes in villages were and to a large extent still are Brahmins and Thakurs. A brilliant satire by Srilal Shukla has mirrored the turbulent currents of socio-politico-economic condition of India through his novel Rag Darbari. Though the backdrop paints the picture of a rural village, it represents India on the larger canvas. A novel of the 70s, it seems to be unparalleled in every passing decade. This novel is full of local idioms and phrases used in Avadhi, a popular dialect of Hindi in Uttar Pradesh. The colloquial Hindi adds spice and humour and makes the reading of the novel interesting. The beauty of the novel lies in exposing the power play and an attempt to displace the existing group of unlawful people from their political positions. Vedji controls the reins of powers. The affordability to indulge in power, pleasure and luxury is because of nepotism and corruption. All those who deny the existence of any of the above three will have to pay a hefty price. Characters like Langad personify the life of a lawful person who is sincere and wants to do something through the right means. He just tries hard to get a copy of the land record without bribing the system but fails. He repeatedly says, Tum nahi samjhoge babu, ye siddhant ki ladai hai. And in the last, he has to lose the battle. With dominating Vedyaji at the top and a failed Langad at the bottom in the power play and corruption game, everyone else is stuck between these two. 
the revolt of Rupan Babu against his father, unpleasant acts of devoted followers, the initial indifference of Badri Pehlwan towards the politics of his father and then reinstating him as heir defeating the ambitions of younger brother Rupan are the interesting incidents which signify everything in the novel. To understand them logically proves futile. The Maya Jal and its power play cannot be explained in a better and entertaining manner than this creation by Srilal Shukla. The metal of the writer makes one an admiring spectator of all these power play and its abysmal roots. Shukla's Shivpal Ganj is interestingly devoid of women. Apart from the daughter of the local moneylender who climbs over the rooftops to romance Ranganath, women only appear as passers-by or in fantasies. Society in Ragdarbari is a male-dominated society and politics is still a male-dominated field despite Indira Gandhi being the Prime Minister for a long time. The presence of female characters would have changed the course of the novel. The levels of corruption would have been less in the society. The author attacks the traditional social values which seem to be male oriented. For example, he throws light on the concept of filial devotion the great respect Indians have for their elders. Two of the characters, Chote Pehelwan and his father, are constantly bickering over a family tradition generations old. The author claims that this is also what represents reality. But perhaps he is overly skeptical about the social system which has given India a surprisingly stable society for hundreds of years. Humor in Rag Darbari Humor in Rag Darbari sustains the interest of the reader by exposing the flaws of the political system and Indian society at large. The author targeted the courts which were indifferent to the common man ever since the 1850s when the administrator Sleeman visited villages in what is now UP and found people perplexed by the corruption and complications of the newly introduced British legal system. The courtroom scenes in Rag Darbari have presented some of the funniest episodes in the book. Humour is seen in the richness of the local dialects. The villagers excel in the art of seeing the funny side of life. Many literary styles add glamour to the novel, but the author has largely relied on genuinely colloquial Hindi enriched with Hindi translations of expressions drawn from the Avadhi dialect. This technique is indeed remarkable. There is an idiom in almost every paragraph, the kind one doesn't read in normal Hindi literature. Tan par nahi patta, paan khaye albatta, meaning not even a leaf to cover the body, but a beetle in the mouth. Every page of the book has humor. Shady at times, mocking at others, dry in places, slapstick in some and sometimes all at the same time. The book is not short on Shukla's angry outbursts, but these are charming ones without any moral pomposity. Anger against the education system, dislike against the conceited Hindi literature of that time, rants against planning commissions and committees, seething against the idea of tranquil rural atmosphere, 
hatred against the reverence for the English language among the policy makers, dislike of the philosophers. The language and humor stands out everywhere, both in dialogue and in the narration of the plot. There is an interesting passage on the modern style of giving lectures and Shukla does not use the word Bhashan here. The lecture was mainly interesting for the Ganjas because right from the start the listeners assumed the speaker was a fool and the speaker assumed the listeners were fools. For the purpose of conversation, this was the idyllic situation. A lecture can only truly be enjoyed when the speaker and the listeners both know that only nonsense is being spoken. On such fragile symmetry do lectures stand in Shivpal Ganj. The moment either party tries to impress intelligence, the other party loses interest. Then there is a portrayal of extravagant advertisements on the walls. They played a key role in mirroring the thoughts of the local people. This though was the public sector in its malaria advertisements asked for villagers help in eradication of mosquitoes as if the villagers wanted to pet them as if a change of heart was needed. For a change of heart you need authority for pa you need English. Going by this Indian philosophy all appeals to kill mosquitoes and eradicate malaria were written in English. That was the rant presented by the author. There is another interesting dialect called Sarfari Boli, a dialect that seems imaginary and includes the addition of the sound arf after the first sound of every word. Karfa harfai sarfala for example, the bhang is omnipresent. To grind bhang is an art, a poem, an antic, a ritual. And immediately to cut back to realism, to kill the romance of the bhang, the author writes, Although you could get high with a leaf bought for a taka, that's a cheap high. Then there are the three helpful strategies to win an election. The Ramnagar trick, the Nevada trick, the Mahipalpur trick. Ramnagar trick becomes valuable when two main candidates are from the same caste and command similar respect. In the Nevada trick, the Brahmin candidate uses the services of a Babaji, his Gaja and Bhang to get the better of the rising Shudra. The Mahipalpur trick which begins with an accident but just like Newton found the truth of gravity in an accident, this scientific method was used at length. The election commission could on the persistence of one of the candidates set his watch run fast by an hour so that the contestant could make sure all his votes had been cast by an hour before the deadline giving him a head start. In Rag Darbari, Vedyaji, a kind of feudal lord uses the Mahipalpur trick to defeat the Nevada trick, the modern scientific philosophy to fight the change. The release of the novel in the 1960s mirrored the disappointment every Indian experienced. The pre-independence ideals which all had placed on pedestal seemed relevant then. But now it reads like a comedy. In the present political scenario, it is well known that the politicians have made the society shallow and to a major extent raised human values to the ground. To make them realize their folly, a satire of this kind 
may not work. The situation needs a strong weapon to cleanse society from the grassroots level itself. The novel fails to give an apt solution. The assorted series of experiences which together make a loosely connected plot diminishes the relevance of the book in the present times. Political satire is brilliant and acidic and is also necessary. But the contemporary authors must present the solution in a humorous tone and create a kind of terror among the politicians. They say the pen is mightier than the sword and the writers can be capable of using this device to create a revolution against corruption in the society. Books can influence readers subconsciously and any small idea spread like this can go a long way. With this, we come to the conclusion of this session. Hope you all had a good time. Thank you.